the breadth, length, depth, and height to prove. Herefore is ceasing then above, O lamp of God, I come, I come.
Drum roll, please. I dedicate this restaurant to the Raising Cane's Christmas. <laughs> Light up your holidays with Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, gift cards, and plush puppies. Hap, hap, happy Christmas from Raising Cane's and National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's a beaut, Todd. It really is. You taught me everything I know about exterior illumination. The world is about to change forever. A day of reckoning. A decree from on high. A time to be counted. A world ruled by an iron fist. Just when people needed hope, God would send a baby, a king, to offer a foretaste of a better future. But why? Why was a virgin chosen to be the mother of Jesus? Why would an earthly man be chosen to raise a baby sent from heaven? Why choose the lowliest of men to be the first to see the newborn king. Why did kings come from the east to worship the king of the Jews? Why Bethlehem? And perhaps the most important question, why should we care? And what should the baby in Bethlehem mean to me? Though many years have gone by, and that stable in Bethlehem is long gone, we need to concentrate our gaze through the midst of time, through the lens of scripture, and use our imagination, not to change the Christmas story, but envision the people, places,
Yes, I surrender, let your pardon come to me. to confess until fully transformed by his love and righteousness. Lord, have mercy on me, I plead as I give myself to you. I give you all I am and all I feel. Lord, have mercy on me.
Why is just a starting line for the true self blooms only when we find our purpose? What makes us tick below the surface? Our reason why is united, undivided, seeking understanding. My why is diversity in unity, a safe space in my community. It's a million faces in a mirror and everyone belongs. Find your why for a better us. Right now is the perfect time to buy gifts for your family and friends with gift cards from Harris Teeter. Because when you do, you earn two times the fuel points. Buy $200 in gift cards and get 400 fuel points. You save 40 cents per gallon. Buy $500 in gift cards and get 1,000 fuel points. That's a dollar off per gallon. This holiday season, buy your gift cards at Harris Teeter and save big at the pump. Shall we all rise up to pray, please? Let's bow down our heads. Father, we are grateful unto you in the name of Jesus for this day. As you have gathered us together for this year's December retreat. We thank you for the message we had earlier on heard. And we thank you for the impact it had made upon us. And as we come before you together now at this time, Listening here and everywhere, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will touch our hearts and causing your word to mix with faith in our hearts in Jesus' name. We are here to be blessed, O oh Lord, and we know you are here for us. We pray that your purpose for guiding us together will be fulfilled in its completeness in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, O oh Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's be seated, please. We shall read from Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and verse 21. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and verse 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. If we look at the program sheets in our hands, what we have for this morning message is repentance and regeneration of kingdom citizens. Repentance and regeneration of kingdom citizens. When we talk of kingdom citizens, that refers to the people in God's kingdom. Though they may be presently living here on earth, yet they are referred to as God's kingdom citizens. Really, all people on earth 
are broadly divided into two categories. Number one, the kingdom citizens, that is also belong to the kingdom of God. The righteous and godly people who are not of the world and they do not get involved in the canal systems of the world. The second division are those who by their choice are given to the worldly lusts and ungodliness. And as the Lord Jesus Christ himself had put it, he says, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And there be many which go in thereat. But because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, few people are those that find it. In this world, you have people who have dual citizenship. They are citizens of this country. They are also citizens of another country somewhere. But as touching the matter of God, nobody can be of dual citizenship. One is either of the kingdom or of this world and its carnality. However, it is not that the division just comes like that. Neither is it by God's favoritism that some people belong to his kingdom and thus they are kingdom citizens. Nor is it because of hatred or because God does not love some people. That's why they don't belong to that citizen, it is purely of choice. The choice that individuals make. God's will is that all should be citizens of his kingdom. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So really, God is willing. His intention is that all should be on his side. Yes, all have sinned. Every human being that has come to this world, all that have come through Adam, they have sinned and they have come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But thank God, the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ his son. And that's how by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ who has come as the gift of God for our eternal life, that's how some people through him become citizens of God's kingdom when they make the right choice, when they turn unto God with all their heart. And for those who choose to remain in sin, they who choose to remain in their nature, they remain Worldly, sinful, in fact, enemies of God. As we look at this message on repentance and regeneration of kingdom citizens, number one, we'll see reconciled and cleansed kingdom citizens. Reconciled and cleansed kingdom citizens. That is those who though they were, they were sinners, but they got reconciled unto God. And by crossing over from being enemies of God, they became members of the family of God through reconciliation. And of course, they were cleansed, and so they become kingdom citizens. Then number two, we shall see repentance from all corrupting carnal characteristics. Repentance from all corrupting carnal characteristics. The possibility of those who have fallen short of the glory of God to repent from every corrupting influence, every carnal characteristics, and become kingdom citizens 
before God. And then number three, we shall see regeneration that qualifies for kingdom citizenship. Regeneration that qualifies for kingdom citizenship. How through generation, anybody who so will, anybody who so desires can become the citizen of the kingdom of God. Now let's take it from number one. Number one, reconciled and cleansed kingdom citizens. In that Philippians, again, chapter 3, verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. For our citizenship is in heaven. How come? How did somebody who, had, who, who was an enemy of God, how did he manage to become a citizen of the kingdom of God? Apostle Paul, in the passage, referred to himself and his audience as having their conversation in heaven. That is, citizens of heaven. How did they come about that? He had earlier on in this same book that he wrote to these same people, Philippians in chapter 1. And there we see in verse 1, Philippians chapter 1 from verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. He went on in verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And then in verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He refers to them as people that were in fellowship in the gospel. Fellowship in the gospel. How did they get into this experience? By accepting and identifying with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we say the gospel, gospel, God's order, securing people's eternal life. By our sins, we have come short of the glory of God. We are not worthy to come near God at all because the soul that sinner, he shall die. Proclamation of death is upon every sinner. But thank God in his love, he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that is the news. That's the good news. That's the gospel that the Lord, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ has been sent into the world to be the propitiation for our sins, to be the solution to the problem of sin for man because he gave his own life and he died and he suffered in our place so that we will no longer suffer for the sins we have committed in eternity. So those who believe that Jesus Christ came because of them, those who believe that Jesus Christ died because of their sins, and they identify with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, they become reconciled unto God. Their sins are forgiven, they are cleansed, and they have names in the book of life. They automatically become members of the citizen, members or citizens of the kingdom of God. And when this decision is taken, it's not just on a faulty foundation. It is by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The record in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, confirms this. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now are still reconciled. That shows it. The possibility of being reconciled unto God, no matter how wayward, no matter how far we may have gone away from God. I believe you are there by the grace of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. By the, by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have access to God because the price for our sins have been fully paid, have been fully met in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And in Romans chapter 5, verse 10, still on this issue of reconciliation that brings us into meaningful, wonderful relationship with the Lord. Reconciliation. It's confirmed there again. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. A major concern there is we were reconciled to God by the death of Jesus Christ, the son of God. And so we became his own dear children and members of his kingdom. And when we come into fellowship of the gospel, that translates into the following for for us as benefits accruing unto us from being in fellowship of the gospel. Number one, our names are written in heaven. And this is a source of real joy. Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Luke chapter 10 verse 20. Very clearly there, the Lord Christ says it is a thing of joy. He himself says we should rejoice, or the Lord says we should rejoice about that. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this, rejoice not that the Spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It is possible that you, brother, say there, you, sister there, friend there, it is possible to have your name written in the book of life in heaven. Not only that, by being in the fellowship with the gospel, we are assured of future exaltation. Future exaltation. Whereby in eternity, we shall eat and drink at the Lord's table in his kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's in Luke chapter 22, verse 30. Luke chapter 22, Verse 30. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Who was the Lord Jesus Christ talking to there? In verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me kingdom citizens. We shall eat and drink at the Lord's table in his kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. What else is the peculiarity or the blessing that comes upon us when we become members or citizens in the kingdom? We are promised a place of permanent residence in heaven. John chapter 14 verse 2. John chapter 14, verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. For every kingdom citizen, there is an assurance of permanent abode in heaven, which the Lord Jesus Christ himself promised that he has gone to prepare. The number four, benefits, Number four, enjoyment of kingdom citizen. There is a provision of a glorious inheritance for us kingdom citizens. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. As many as have been reconciled and cleansed, they have a glorious inheritance reserved in heaven for them. Then we also see that while still on earth, even presently, there is deliverance from all evil works. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, the benefits of kingdom citizens. When we are reconciled unto God, the Lord specially provides for our protection. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. 
Amen, everybody. Amen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Sure, divine preservation for kingdom citizens, even while they are on earth here. Let's add this also. While here on earth, amidst all our conflicts, amidst all our tribulations, amidst all our trials, we are made more than conquerors in all our earthly conflicts. In Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all our afflictions, in all our conflicts here on earth, we are more than conquerors. Amen. And these are the benefits that await every kingdom citizen, now and in eternity. But how do you join the kingdom citizen? How do you also become a kingdom citizen? And that leads us to part two. We come to part two now. Repentance from all corrupting carnal characteristics. In Romans chapter one, there is this peculiarity in the characteristics of those who are not kingdom citizens. And what, and this rightly describes all in Romans chapter one from verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, disobedient to parents, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Loss, carnality, wickedness, evil dreams, that characterizes every fellow who is not a kingdom citizen. And uh, it, it takes coming out of this style of living, coming out of this nature, coming out, coming, coming out of this kind of life before one can be admitted into the citizenship of God's kingdom. Because with carnal works, with the works of the flesh, with, with uh, worldly loss, with ungodliness, one cannot become a member of God's kingdom, no matter what. But we bless the name of the Lord. It doesn't leave us in darkness and in desolation or in uh, lostness, in hopelessness. In, in Titus chapter 2, from verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Let's see the provision of God. Let's see the graciousness of God here made for us so that we can cross over from the worldly laws, from the ungodliness uh, that we were born into, that we have been living all our lives, that we can cross over to newness of life. Titus chapter 2 verse 11, please. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Praise the Lord. Yes, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Everybody, all men in all continents, all men in all nations, all men no matter the background, all men no matter the status, whether rich, whether poor, whether tall, whether short, whether white skin, whether black skin, no matter what, the grace of God has appeared to all men. And what does this grace do? Let's look at it, verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen. Look at it very well. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all. God is not withholding it from any. Rather, he has released it to touch everybody. And when grace comes on you and you open up your life and you allow grace to take its course on your life, the grace of God will teach you, will, will help you to overcome every form of ungodliness. You will deny ungodliness in totality. You will deny all worldly laws in totality. And you live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And that, with that new life of righteousness and godliness through the Lord Jesus Christ will naturally bring you into the citizenship of God's kingdom. What practical steps do we then take? In John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3, we have seen that we cannot continue in the carnality, in the worldly loss, in the ungodliness by which we have been, we have been living all our lives from, from infanthood until this time. Jesus Christ told one religious leader in Israel, very vital, the main issue, if anybody will cross from darkness to light, if anybody will cross over into the kingdom of God and become a citizen there. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again. There is need for the new birth. The first bat was a bat into sin, born of the flesh, and living a life in the flesh, in all carnality, in all sinfulness. But now, the Lord is requesting that somebody must be born again. Look at it, verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, he cannot become a citizen of the kingdom of God. And so, to be born again is to start life all over by repenting from sins and receiving Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior. Because it is only as many as received him that he gives power unto to become the sons of God. Life outside Christ is all of sin, all of loss, all of carnality. But when somebody gets born again by repentance... An acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ, he becomes a new creature. The old sinful life will pass away, and all things will become new in such a fellow's life. It's very essential because the Lord Jesus Christ, who wants everybody, because he's, he's coming to the world is to save everybody. He's been waiting and knocking at every heart that whoever allows him to come in, he will come in and he will. He will come in with the power of God to change that fellow from darkness to light, to, to, to change that fellow into a child of God. Look at it in John chapter 1, verse 12. Very clear, very explicit there. John chapter 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, that only those who received him, only those who believe on his name, to them he gives power and the power of sonship to change them from children of the devil because every sinner is a child of the devil. He that commits sin is of the devil, whoever. But when somebody, re when somebody renounces his sin, he repents and he receives Jesus into his heart, he becomes a child of God. His identity changes. He becomes a citizen of the kingdom of God, having been made a new creature through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the expectation of the Lord is that from that moment onward, one begins to bring forth the fruit of repentance. One has to show the, for the evidence that truly I've allowed Jesus into my heart 
I'm no longer the old sinful fellow. The sinful life has gone. And all the evil things, all the lustful things, all the ungodly things I used to do, I am doing them no more. No, but it's not that you get born, you say you get born again and then you still remain like the old fellow, impossible. It's born again, you become a brand new person. The scripture says, if anybody be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that clearly means that some things you used to do which are ungodly, you do them no more. Some places you used to go, which do not have the approval of the Almighty God, you go there no more. Some friends you used to keep, which have been, which are corrupt, who have corrupting influence, you keep them no more. Of course, we are not that you hate anybody, you still love them, but no longer moving together in the old way. Now you're moving together is to make them to come to the light, to make them to know the Lord also, as you are making a decision. So, friend, there is every assurance that if you will exploit the grace of God this day and you will allow the grace of God that brings salvation to work effectively in you, you become a brand new person even today by the grace of God. And there is no reason why you should doubt it. There is no reason why you should disallow it from happening to you. Because God is all out in mercy. He's there by your side. His spirit is there by your side, pleading with you to turn over unto the Lord. Why will you want to die in your sin? No matter the number of your sins, the Lord is willing to forgive and to cleanse you from all that you may have done in times past. For you to be doubly assured... Let's read together from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. That God is willing. There is no one who comes unto the Lord that he will turn away. He will save you. He will cleanse you. Rome, uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. They shall be as wool. The Lord will completely cleanse you and remove all of darkness from you and bring all of light into you. And you will now be walking in the light, no longer in darkness. And that the Lord will do for you, even today by his grace. You don't need to postpone it. You don't need to procrastinate about it. God is willing. And if God is ready, why are you not ready too? If God is willing, why are you not willing too? If you are willing, look at it. In that same place, verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. You shall receive the benefit and you shall also be, con you, you shall be converted and become a citizen in the kingdom truly. I pray it will not be difficult for you. I pray it will not harden your heart in Jesus' name. But then everything doesn't end at repentance. Because it is not the intention of God that you repent from sins. And then you return into sins. No. And that leads us to the third part of the message. Regeneration that qualifies for kingdom citizenship. I, I, repentance you naturally lead into regeneration. Uh, when you were, in, formerly you are living in sin. And uh, now that you say you have repented, you are no longer go, going in the way of sin, in the way of loss, in the way of carnality. And then you are not turning around. Then... You keep to that by the grace of God. Let's hear what the Lord Jesus Christ said to those who believe on him. John chapter 8 verse 31. John chapter 8. We are reading from verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him. If you continue in my word. Then are ye my disciples indeed. The first step is taken. You have believed. You have repented. You have renounced sin. But continue in the world. Everything has not ended. You are still here on earth. And uh, you must learn to grow in the Lord. Of course, temptations will come. Your old friends will still want to come and lure you away into sin. And uh, you see here sinful sons. You see, you see, see sinful uh, uh, sins here and there. But the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, if truly you have believed, 
If truly you are, you are repenting today, and I know by the grace of God you will repent today, by the grace of God, you will not just repent, you will continue with the Lord. You will maintain the newness of, you, you maintain the newness of life. It says, if you have truly believed, then continue in my words. And then that will now make you his disciples indeed. I pray you be disciples indeed unto the Lord Jesus in Jesus' name. In another place, in John chapter 15, hear the Lord Jesus Christ again. John chapter 15, verse 4 and verse 5. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. You see that? Abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't forsake him. You don't, you don't stray away from him. You remain in him. You remain following him. Listening to him every time and uh, uh, following in his steps. Doing his will. And uh, doing this every day. It's not that you just do it occasionally. No. You follow, it, you follow him every day. Look at verse 5. I am divine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. You need Jesus Christ 24 by 7. You need him in the morning. You need him in the afternoon. You need him at night. Everywhere you need him. And you must stay close to him. Because should you allow any disconnection between you and the Lord Jesus Christ, you become fruitless. You, you are cut off from him. You become dry. You become lifeless. And his light and life in you, they will depart. So remain connected with him. Remain abiding in him. In Matthew chapter 3, how to show that we are abiding in him, how to show that we are continuing his word, look at Matthew chapter 3 in verse 8. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for, for, for repentance. Let, let your life now show. Let the fruit of your life now show that you have really repented and that you are now continuing in the Lord. That you are now a new creature. That truly you have been forgiven your sins and you are forsaking your sins. Bring forth fruit, fruit of repentance. And what do we mean by the fruit of repentance? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, remember, you are now spiritual. When you are born again, you become spiritual. Before being born again, you are carnal, worldly, and only the works of the flesh you are pursuing and you are exhibiting in all things at all times, in every, in every place. But now that you have been born of the Spirit, let's see the fruit of the Spirit. So, Look at it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. We've just read through the fruit of the Spirit. And that is what God wants to see in your life now that you have, when you have repented, that is what must follow. Bring forth this fruit. It's not that you just confess sins and then you say you have received forgiveness and then no change of life, no change of uh, attitude, no change of uh, uh, way of life. No, everything must now change because in Christ Jesus, when you repent, you become a new creature, a brand new person now living and abiding in him, bringing forth the fruit of the spirit, love, love towards God at all times, in all situations, love towards fellow human beings like yourself. And uh, the joy of the Lord, not the joy of the things of the world, not the joy of food, not the joy of money, but the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. You are joyful in the Lord at all times, and uh, your joy is not hanging on material possession, not on mundane things of the world, but on this that you know the Lord and uh, you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, and that you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Then peace you be at peace with just within yourself. 
Jesus Christ in you himself is the prince of peace and in him you have peace at all times. And of course, you'll be at peace with people around you. You follow peace with everybody. You are not quarrelsome with anybody. Even if people want to fight, you are not fighting. You follow peace with all by the grace of God. And uh, we also see the fruit of the spirit there is long-suffering, long patience, forbearance, endurance in all things, and then gentleness. You are not an aggressive fellow any longer. You are not a troublesome fellow any longer. You are not a, loud, a noisy fellow, clamorous fellow who is shouting and fighting, yelling about. No, you are now gentle and uh, good. Because we see goodness there. You are good. No more, no more wicked acts. No more misbehavior. You are good to all. Then we also see faith. Faith, you are faithful. You act in faith towards God. You believe God at all times. You trust in him. And in whatever you are, whatever you are entrusted with, you act faithfully in all things. I'm, trust, I'm sure God will help you in Jesus' name. And we also see meekness. Meekness, like the Lord Jesus Christ, who was offended, who was abused, who was persecuted, and yet he will not fight back. Humble, lowly, no retaliation, even when offended. That's the kind of, that's the, that, that's the fruit we bring forth when we become born again, when we have repented. And then temperance. Temperance and self-control. Self-control. In all of this, by the grace of God, you will not be fruitless. When you start on this new life, you will not be fruitless. You will bring forth the fruit of repentance in Jesus' name. And part of your abiding in Christ is that you are following in a sense. As the fruit of the Spirit is manifesting forth in your life, you are following the footsteps of Christ, that where Christ goes, that's where you go. Where Christ will not go, you will not go. What Christ will not do, you will not do. You do all things to please him and to please him alone. You follow in his steps. In fact, uh, uh, let, let, let's see something from Matthew chapter 5 to show you further the lifestyle of the kingdom citizens. In Matthew chapter 5, we'll read from verse 3. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We can see the characteristics of the kingdom, or I mean, of the kingdom citizens here. 